We were in Yorba Linda at the Nixon Library with John Carlson, who served the, in the White House from 1972 to 1977, Presidents uh, Nixon and Ford, in the press office as uh, Assistant Press Secretary and Deputy Press Secretary and Acting Press Secretary when everybody else was gone. And, uh, do you remember the first time you met or dealt with Richard Nixon, with President Nixon? Well, <clears throat> being in the press office, there would usually be someone from the press office sitting in on the cabinet meetings, sitting in on the various staff meetings and so forth. So uh, I arrived at the White House in, in March, Jan January, February of 1972, just as Nixon and Kissinger were returning from China. And I got very involved then for really several years in following up on the China trip. You were very active in, as well as you say, uh, with China from that time on and then continued to be. Mm -hmm. How did that develop? And well, <clears throat> at that time, uh, the, the press secretary for the Chinese government was a fellow named Han Shu, very famous fellow, wonderful person. And he and I were the liaisons between the Nixon uh, White House and the Chinese uh, press office. And so we, ch we, we chatted you know, maybe weekly, every other week, and stayed in close course, co close contact, close correspondence. You were also present then from 72 on. Uh, that was sort of the height of the Vietnam experience and then through the end, the, the sad mm -hmm. end of the Vietnam experience in uh, 1975. Uh, you were, did you have any, any particular memories of that, that arc of the Vietnam story in the Nixon White House? Well, I think we all know that when President Nixon assumed the office, the presidency, he inherited a horrible war, over 500,000 troops, American troops in Vietnam, and 1,200 Americans being killed monthly, and no end in sight. And there was tremendous public opinion. I think a more majority of the American people, per the polls, were thought the war was a mistake and uh, tremendous pressure by the Congress and by the anti-war uh, movement to get out immediately. But of course, that wasn't President Nixon's plan. He felt we had to Vietnamize the war and have the South Vietnamese take over more of the combat role, and then we could exit gracefully. And uh, at that time, one of the challenges we had <clears throat> is that the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese would attack the American troops and then run across the border back into Laos and Cambodia. And we were forbidden to go across that border. However, Nixon made the decision, a very bold decision, to go ahead and bomb those sanctuaries, hit their ammunition dumps, their food supplies, and so forth. So they didn't have a safe haven. And that leads me into what I remember as probably one of the most remarkable days, my days in the White House, and as I look back now, one of the most memorable days probably in my life. Uh, back in early 1973, uh, President Nixon announced the end of all hostilities in Vietnam. And then he said all troops and all POWs will be home soon. You move forward now to May 24th, 1973. It's during Operation Homecoming. And all the POWs were invited to Washington, had just been home a short time, to come to the State Department. 591 of them. And President Nixon was going over to meet them for the first time. And I went in the motorcade, I went with the President. There's only maybe three or four staffers maximum, no press coverage. And we arrived at the State Department, the President went in the back door of the auditorium, I went into the auditorium and the spokesperson for the POWs was on stage, everybody's talking, mingling around. He said, gentlemen, the president has just arrived. He'll be out here momentarily. The place went quiet, quiet as a pin. And uh, it was maybe 30 seconds later, President Nixon walked out on the stage. The place went crazy, thunderous applause, whistles, screaming, shouting, and so forth. And then when they all sat, quieted and sat down, President Nixon then said, welcome home. And he said, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate and the American people appreciate what you've done for our country. And he said, there was never a day in, in 
that I'm in the White House, that I didn't think of you in captivity and what you were doing for your country. And then the spokesperson for the POW said, Mr. Nixon, Mr. President, when you started bombing Cambodia and Laos, we understand what a tremendous challenge that was and how you went against public opinion and so forth. And then the biggest thing was Hanoi, Christmas Day, 1972. The Christmas Day bombings of Hanoi. Once that happened, we knew our days in captivity were ending. The guards started treating us better, the food was better, less harassment, torture, everything. And he said, it was the most wonderful thing and we can never thank you enough. Gentlemen, by what you did and what you said on your return, you've helped turn this country around. You have helped reinstill faith where there was doubt before. And for what you have done by your faith, you have built up America's faith. This nation and the world will always be in your debt. Those first four years in the office were not easy ones for me in the international front, fighting for an adequate defense budget, fighting for a responsible foreign policy. But looking toward the balance of the second four years, let me say I feel better. Because out in this room, I think I've got some allies, and I will appreciate your help. Thank you. Everybody was crying. It was just, I've never seen anything like it. Grown men, the president had tears streaming down his, down his face. And it was one of the most emotional things I have ever been in. And when they finally split up, he described that tonight they're gonna to come to my house, to the White House, to America's house. We're gonna celebrate your return. And that was a fabulous evening also. Uh, 1,200 people came to the South Lawn of the White House uh, to celebrate the return of, of the POWs. And they came over a little early. They got tours of the White House. The president was taking them on tours. And it rained hard that night. We had these big tents out there. But it was just, it was just spectacular. And Irving Berlin was there to sing God Bless America. Bob Hope said a few one-liners. Jimmy Stewart. And it was a wonderful, wonderful day that I'll never forget. And uh, I just wish some people, not more people, because very few saw it, but I just wish people could see the real Richard Nixon, the human side that very few people ever got a chance to see. And I felt very privileged to be there that day. Well, and we're privileged to, uh, to hear your memories. Thank you very much. Thank you.